All right, so let's talk about uh, another cool aspect of this tool set and it's called uh, DVH Texture Sequence. So this is actually how I started building this tool. So I had to work on a, uh, on a show uh, and I had to produce a sort of a 2D type of um, type of looking effect. So I like I hand animated actually some, like just some simple sparkly bits, something like this. Just a couple of these sort of uh, sprite sequences. And I, um, yeah, I needed a way to sort of map these on. And I had some other things that I instanced on here as well. Uh, but then I needed a way to also do these sequences. And that's why I started building this tool. And then I had I had that tool, sort of a basic version of it. And then I said, all right, this might also be cool to wrap this into a thing where I also can gen like instance geometry and stuff like that. And um, oh, here we are uh, a couple of months later with a finished tool set. But even though this like this is probably the, the one thing that probably goes a little bit under the radar, maybe for everybody is using this, but this is actually quite cool. And you can actually start using this to, to do sprite-based effects like you would do normally in Unreal or if you do in After Effects, but you can do them in Houdini now. And um, yeah, so let me show you. I can turn off my slap comp a little bit. So you can see here are these, uh, these sprite sequences. They're being spawned on these particles. So you have some particles dropping. Let me show you just the um, the particle effect itself. If I just uh, highlight this, All right? So you can see it's just this is just uh, this. It's some particle particle trailing, and then I have I have it set up with uh, yeah, just a couple of different things. Let me my time. So there's there's this thing. There's the main trail, and then there's there's these things, which are the textured uh, textured grids. They are actually sort of pointing to the camera. As you can see, if I rotate my camera, you can see them sort of rotating along with it. Um, and if we have a look at this in the view part, you can see these things sort of being spawned. So you can you can create really cool sort of uh, of these more 2D type of looks. That normally this would be pretty difficult to do in um, in Rini. Um But with Path Sequencer, it's pretty straightforward. If we just hide the other stuff, you can. Just focus on uh, focus on these, and of course, like we can drive these with all of the um, all of the other stuff as well. Like we can we can retime when they when they spawn, as you can see here. We can change the delay. Uh, so if you have control over over all of these things. Um, like it just works with the with the rest of the tool set. Uh, so you can just map sprites this way, and it's just a pretty cool sort of um, yeah way to way to work and you can see it's a pretty pretty neat looking looking effect just uh quite magical and you have these things while like just moving around pretty neat but yeah um yeah so let's uh let's have a look at this and let's have a look at some other things this this can do because it can also uh instance like static uh pieces of uh like st static sprites and stuff like that um which we're gonna talk about uh, talk about here so um, yeah let's have a look so here's another example uh, we just have some uh, <coughs> some snowflakes and here we have these uh, these things moving about and then if we have a look in here we should be able to for some reason it's not, where are we where is it all right there we go oh let me for some reason it's still using the slap comb all right, there we go. All right, sorry, I was highlighting the wrong, uh, <laughs> the one, the wrong thing here. Yeah, but so um, see here we have some uh, some snow falling, uh, falling down, and it's all just all so being driven by this thing. This here's a folder with a uh, bunch of uh, yeah, bunch of images in there, and it's just being uh, being mapped as a texture path, and you can assign it that way, and then we have. Of the other nodes, of course, doing their thing to sort of drive these, uh, drive these rotations, stuff like that, driving the speed and etc. Uh, etc. Et so pretty cool. And then here, one more example where we're just having a uh, having a grid. We're assigning a uh, grid uh, brick texture, and then we're replacing some of the paths to get different uh, different uh, paths here. Uh, we should. Get them as a DX rough. Where is it? 
So here we have uh, like another example of uh, here we have a grid, UV being uh, applied. Then we have a uh, applying a red brick texture, which is the uh, diffuse. And then we're just using string replace here to sort of get different paths for it to get albedo displacement and rough. And then if we go in here, you can see we can sort of assign these in the material here with the uh, peaks displays. So, and this is being driven by these attributes. So you can see, and the, you can, of course, you can combine all of this with all of the other, um, all of the other stuff. So uh, yeah, let's let's just learn how we can set this up. I think it should be pretty straightforward because we've already done uh, done all of the other things. Um, but yeah, let me uh, uh, let's just set it up from scratch here. So what we'll do is just do it inside of this existing thing because we already have like a little pop sim going on, and I don't need to, I guess, explain to you how you do a pop sim. It's just a very simple, um, very simple thing here. Just some uh, pop force and some drag. So just like with anything else, you do initialize attributes. You initialize it to H. I should really make the default H. So I'm gonna do that before I put out the tool. So they are initialized. Then we want to do a um, TVH texture sequence. So this is the uh, the other one, texture sequence. Can assign this, and we want to sort of uh, we want to assign a some 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 sprite. We probably don't want to do a sequence. We probably do static, static from file, right? Let's go to or let's do static from folder. By the way, because we want to uh, want to assign a folder. So let's do a folder. Uh, let's go to our snowflakes snowflakes folder and hit accept. Now you can see here we get a uh, TX path and this will sort of randomize uh, the assignment. Of course you can change the seed to sort of randomize the assignment. Now you can see these are not sort of uh, pointing into the right direction. Let me actually grab a, grab a cam. So here's my cam one. So if I rotate, you can see this is not, not ideal, right? Because they're we want them to always face to the camera. So that's where sort of DVH point the cam comes in. So we put it in and we put in our cam. Cam two. Uh, oh wait, we want cam one actually. Cam one. All right. So you can see they will always face to the camera. So now we can just position our camera somewhere and they will always sort of face in the correct direction. You don't always want to do this, but if you want to do like straight, just always facing like 2D type of effect, it's probably what you want to do. Now we can do TVH orient instances. Animation, animate over age. We can do some random here, and we can have them sort of spin over uh, spin over time. Oh, we should uh, do read time instances in there as well. Else, this will not work because we need the speed to be initialized. All right, here we go. We can change the speed up a little bit. You can see they will just rotate a little bit. We can do TVH skill instances as we do. Scale them down. Uh, we need to add value. All right, there we go. So then we get, uh, yeah, we get some snowflakes. That's pretty much it. Like if we just plug this into this thing now and then we can have a look. You see, we get our, we get our sprites. And uh, yeah, of course, like it dep depends on sort of what you want to do. Like right now, I want them to sort of face the, uh, face the camera. Uh, but maybe you don't always want them to face the camera. Like, let me go into my cam one again. So I could also like if I if I turn off my uh, point to camera and I just have them sort of now you can see them spin like this. Um, you can go in orient instances. You could go and you could go change the default orient. Uh, now they will spin over a different axis. Or I could do an attribute randomize. Nope. Attribute randomize. And I could do a uh, orient. I would probably, I'm thinking about it. Maybe I should do a randomize or randomize orient also in the uh, in the thing there. Um, all right, something like this. Oh, this should go put to ID. Else this will break. All right. So now you can see they're just gonna spin over random uh, random axes. So that can also be a thing that you uh, that you might want to do. Um, we yeah, put that in. So now you can see they will just spin over over these other axes. Again, they're just textured grids. Depends on how you wanna how you wanna use it. 
Uh, this is the default to sort of to put out these uh, textured grid. You can also you can also say points geometry. So it kind of depends on how you wanna how you wanna do it. Um, yeah, pretty straightforward. Just uh, yeah, static from folder and you just assign the thing. You can do nested just like with the geometry. And uh, or of course, or if you want just specific snowflakes, we could do static from file and we could assign specific snowflakes this way. And now if we were to do that, you just get those specific snowflakes. Um, so in order to render this, there are multiple ways. Uh, the thing is, if you wanted to render this in Karma, this is currently only supported Karma CPU. Karma XPU is not working, as you can see. Uh, hopefully this will change in the future. So the way you set this up in the material, you use your prim for reader to load the attribute. Then you use a UV texture. You cannot use the uh, material X image. Um, this sort of errors for some reason. Uh, again, I should maybe bug report this or whatever, because I'm assuming it shouldn't be too hard to make all of this work on XPU, but at the moment it's not working on XPU. Maybe by the time you're watching this, it might work on XPU. Just try it out. So you just put this in, put the, the UV texture into a file, and then you can just plug it in to RGB and alpha, and it'll work. If you want to do this in Redshift instead, you can, uh, but let me, do I have a Redshift material here somewhere? All right, let me just do a... Uh, your material builder. So you will need an OSL for this. So you need to make OSL. And you need to point it to an OSL file. So if you Google for uh, Redshift OSL Uber Shader, you will find this thing. So you can get it here from GitHub. Uh, so you can download it or you can copy and paste it. So you can, you can copy and paste it in here. So you can either put it to a file or you can just put a text, put it like that and hit uh, compile. Right, now you will get a OSL, and then I can do a uh, string user data. You can do dxpath, and I can put it into file name, and then that will work with Redshift. And again, uh, oh, if you use Octane, it will, like I haven't tried, but it will probably use the same, because this can also, like Octane also supports OSL. So I'm assuming it will be similar, so just throw this in Octane and try it out, and it will probably work just fine. So that's how you sort of uh, render this in uh, uh, in Redshift or uh, or in Karma. Again, I hope this will be eventually work in uh, uh, XPU as well. But like again, effects like this you will probably render separately anyway. And there, yeah, like you can see, it's really fast with just CPU anyway. So it's not really that big of a deal. Just render it let, with CPU and uh, yeah, just comp it uh, comp it in your scene. But yeah, you can see how this can uh, be quite cool to do more of a two D type of effect. Um, so the way we do the other uh, type of effect is sort of the more magical, um, magical type of effect. Let me just go back to my magic. So it's just a, it's just a thing of here of some animated curves. And then we have a pop network just animating some things. Again, I'm not going to go over how this all works, but it's just a pop source and then just some pop replicates and stuff like that. So I get some groups from here. I can, I can uh, uh, yeah, just keep and remove some groups. You can see here I'm just using the uh, the initialize uh, attributes. And after that, I'm actually using the skill instances to just do ramp over life. Again, you could set this up another way, but I mean, I thought I'd use, uh, use this thing. Even though I'm not instancing anything on here, I'm just rendering these as particles. I can still use these to, to set P scales. Make sure to set it to add value. Like this, else it uh, else not going to work. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you can do your uh, texture sequence. So here again, same thing on these on these things where I want to do these animated sprites. I would go to my texture sequence and I would actually put it to sequence from disk instead of stacking from file sequence from disk. You put it to uh, to these things. Uh, and then again, just skill instance, orient instance, read time instances to to do it. Like you know how all of this works. By now, this is just uh, pretty basic stuff, like how we also use it for the geometry stuff. Um, then they will just be assigned here as paths. And then we can use them 
in our uh, in Garma to uh, to get something that looks kind of cool. Oh, oh uh, the P skills are a little weird. See what happened there. Oh wait, yeah, it's uh, it this needs to set to multiply, I think, and multiply, I think, because I already assigned some P scales there. All right, here we go. All right, so um, don't don't know which camera I have. All right, so now you can see uh, uh I'm messing it up with the, with the camera here. I don't I don't I don't, I don't know which camera I uh, I use for this. All right, there we go. So um, yeah, you can see you can make pretty cool, pretty cool effects like this. Uh, so I'd love to see what everybody comes up with. But yeah, it's a uh, yeah, it's just a nifty, nifty little tool set you can use. Uh, you can use for all kinds of things. And again, all these HDSs work together. I might, I might have new, uh, new, uh, new tools later down the line as well in this, in this, in this tool set. Uh, who knows? Um, yeah. So be sure to report and report any bugs that you find. Uh, make suggestions if you want updates to the tool set. I'd love to see what everybody comes up with. Um, but yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for watching, and uh, see you in the next one. Peace. Bye.